also, payouts can be deceiving. I know when I first started, along with you know basically everyone, when you see those high payouts, those are the those are the the offers that you're going to want to gravitate towards. But I want to tell you, actually, I prefer the lower payout option, uh, lower payout offers. They're a lot easier to test. They're usually in the easier geos or easier countries, and also because it's going to cost me a lot less, I'm going to get a lot more conversions. I'm going to get better data and I'm gonna start making money quicker. And then finally, the third thing when you're looking at your offer is the conversion flow. So specifically, I run the sweepstakes, a lot of like win iPhones, and there's three flows. So the first one, the SOI, which stands for single opt-in, and this is the one where you come to the offer page, and all you have to do is you provide your email, I'm sure everyone's seen it, boom, you give your email, I get paid. Second one, a little bit harder is the pin or pin submit. With this one, the person needs to give their phone number, then they're gonna get a text message, and then they're gonna uh, reply with the pin. As you can see, there's some extra steps. These are a little bit tougher to convert. Still possible on Pops, I still run them, but because they're tougher, it's a higher payout. Finally, the credit card. So I see a lot of uh, credit card uh, offers starting you know within this year and you know while these can be very enticing with the high payouts for pops I'm gonna tell you just uh, I don't even I don't even test them anymore they just do not really convert on pops uh, you're gonna see them quite often on some of the top offer lists but the reason is you know people are running them on on other traffic sources imagine if you got a pop-up on the website and they ask you to give your credit card and it's usually that's usually not the way that the conversion flow will, will ever really work. Number two, so after having an offer that works, the second thing you're going to need is a lander that converts. And I know what probably a lot of you are thinking, because I was thinking in the beginning, oh, I can't code. How am I ever going to make a working lander? This can be really tough. Don't worry about it. Once you start with uh, spy tools, and you know my favorite is Adplexity, with that. It's, at, it's literally one click away, and you can download uh, the offer. Uh, I'm sorry, not the offer. You can download the landing page that people are using. So actually, if you go, I'm not going to tell you how you'd be able to find mine, but if you are on Adplexity in some of the countries that I run in, you will actually see my landers. They're, they're everywhere. They're really hard, uh, really hard to hide. Okay, and number three is everything else. So... I don't have enough time to go into absolutely everything you need for success. Another reason, you know, once you join the six-week course, you'll have access to me and the other TAs every day for all six weeks. We can hold your hand, get you through it. There's a lot more to it, but finding an offer that converts and a lander that converts is really going to get you far. So I wanted to stress those two points. Next thing, okay, so how your AM can help. So. First off, it's really important that you have a good, uh, a good relationship with your, your AM or your affiliate manager at the, the various networks that you're, you're going to be running with. So make sure you treat them right from the beginning. Be friendly the first time you talk to them. Understand that it needs to be a two-way uh, two relationship. Also, I want you to realize your AM probably has hundreds of affiliates under them and the majority of these people are going to run no traffic nothing to any of the offers or they're going to do very low revenue well the way that your affiliate manager makes their bonus money is through your revenue so there's going to be a ton of people that come on as newbies and they're never going to run anything and they're going to try and take up a lot of time so you want to separate yourself from the pack make a real relationship as such like when i first started i made a point I talk to all my AMs about, you know, a little, don't want to take up a lot of their time, but, you know, go a little bit before, beyond AM. If you have something in common, you know, bond a little bit over that. Believe me, it will make all the difference. And then as soon as you're running even just a couple hundred dollars in revenue a day, you'll see instantly you'll be on their radar. They'll see, oh, this person's legit. They're running traffic. Okay, I'm going to make sure I pay attention. And they can help you out more than you realize. So they have all the stats, all the stats for every offer on their network. 
they can see it right in front of them. So they can help guide you in the right direction if you're testing a new country or something's not working or for some reason you're doing really good and all of a sudden you're not, they can, they can see the patterns. So take advantage of, of your AM, but again, try not to take up too much of their time. And then when I'm looking for top offers, I always want to ask about volume. I'm looking for what offer is doing the most volume, the most conversions. I don't care that someone is running this one offer and every three pop-ups they're getting a conversion, but they're only doing 10 conversions a day. I want the one that's doing thousands of conversions because I know that that offer works. It's working for someone else. Hopefully, uh, it can work for me. You're going to get, so top offers, I have top offers aren't all created equal. The reason I wanted to say this is you're going to get emails from all your affiliate networks and they're going to say, these are the top 10 offers. And they're not lying. These are the top 10 offers. But not all these top 10 offers are going to be created equally. So first thing is tier one. A lot of these offers are going to be in these top, tier, we call it tier one is basically US, Australia, and the UK. And this is, these are very competitive markets. So traffic's going to be a lot more expensive. All the big boys are going to be playing in these geos. And it, it's just, it's a really tough place to start. So I'll, I'm sure you've heard it before. I'm just going to reiterate it. Instead, I recommend you, you know, test in Asia. I've had a lot of success there. Eastern Europe, maybe some of these countries, you know, they have a smaller population. So, you know, they're, they're looked over by some of the bigger affiliates, and then Latin America. So it, it ebbs and flows where exactly is the best. Currently, all three of these are pretty good. Sweeps are running pr pretty, pretty much around the world right now. And the second thing is some of these top offers, they'll show up out of nowhere, especially the credit card submits. And the reason they're on this list is people are running them on Facebook. So Facebook is not pops. So pop up, you go to the website and it just pops up. Whereas uh, for anyone who's ever uh, run any marketing on, on Facebook, I'm not sure if anyone's tried it, they have insane targeting. So you can pick someone's age, what they like. Let's say they could be like a Katy Perry fan. You can make a specific landing page just for that. Well, that's how they're, they're getting through uh, to some of these offers. So don't be fooled if you see some of these high payout offers on the top list. They're, they're not good to start with on pops. Okay, next thing, spy tools are your friend. So I took a screenshot of this because I just wanted to show you actually how easy, this, how easy this is. So I clicked on an offer. You can see the little picture here. It's an iPhone 7 offer. And then you click on the link over here, and it shows me what affiliate network is running it. It literally tells me, okay, this guy is running to click dealer. And I'm thinking, oh, well, I wonder if only I could see the offer right here. It gives me a link to the offer. If you click on it, it'll bring it up and you can see the actual offer. So now I can go into ClickDealer, I look at the couple of, of offers that are in that country and I can find the exact offer. And if this person is doing high volume, well, I know that this is one of the, the offers that uh, is working. Okay, next one. So on to landers. Don't reinvent the wheel. There are basically two types of landing pages that I have had just great success with. First one is the wheel or the spin lander. So I took a couple screenshots. This is uh, off of Adplexity, which is you know my favorite spy tool. And as you can see, they look similar, but a little bit different. So basically, it's going to pop up on your phone, and some of them will auto spin. Some of them you have to actually click the spin button, and then some of them will have you know some crazy pop up as an intro or an exit pop. I recommend you go on. It doesn't have to be the country you're going to run in, but you know go on, find the theme that you think looks right, download it. And, oh yeah, actually I forgot. I wanted to show you on the slide before, right here. Literally to download the the lander that you want, it's one click. It's this orange button right here. Download this landing page. Boom puts it in a zip file for you and that's it. You open it up and you just you need to have a, some basic knowledge of HTML because you're gonna have to change the links so that it goes to obviously your affiliate link instead of the person who's running it. Make sure you change those, some people don't. Every once in a while someone will download one of my landers and I'll get a spike in a country I'm not even running and I'll know somebody downloaded my lander and, and forgot to change the link. Okay, so with the wheel, 
basically download it, make sure it works. Run it on your phone, make sure it gets all the way through to the offer. Okay, this is the first thing. Second one that I've had a lot of success with is either the three or the four questions. So there's endless themes. This one, oh, and so one thing I wanted to mention, I wanted to give you a disclaimer. So using company logos and names is illegal. You cannot do this. You'll see a lot when you're on the spy tools. You're going to see Google. You're going to see Apple. You're going to see Amazon. I highly recommend you do not use these emblems. They can get you in a lot of trouble. And trust me, I, I run without them. And I, you know, I'm still you know, highly successful. So you can make it work without them. It's really not worth the worry and the headache. So with these, pick a couple themes that you like, depending on the color scheme. You can always go in and change it. Um, like here's one, I think this one's from Saudi Arabia. A couple clicks. This one obviously looks just like an iPhone. This one's brand new. They're running the iPhone X. And then, you know, this one looks just kind of like Amazon. So you go through it. It's got right here, who's the founder of Amazon? Make sure your questions match the country you're running in with a theme that you're running. Uh, that you're running with. So like Apple questions, Amazon questions. Also, do a little extra research. So in certain countries, there might be an app or a website you've never heard of. Check the top 10 websites because everyone is going on, all, all the newbies are going on, and actually a lot of the, uh, a lot of the affiliates, they just go on, they're going to rip these landers off Adplexity and maybe change a couple words. But if you could find a new theme that no one else is using, because no one knows that this obscure website is really popular in the country you're running. Well, that's one of the ways I've found great success in, in new countries. Okay, now on to picking an offer. So I highly recommend when you start off, you want to start with a low payout single opt-in. So the single opt-in is the one where you provide your email, maybe also your name and, and a birthday. So all it takes is an email. People give up their email pretty easily, it's free to them, not costing them any money. What I like to look for is you want broad appeal. Everyone wants an iPhone, everyone wants the new Samsung, or you know, certain countries, they'll have a really uh, really popular store. Those vouchers, those, those also work well. So I just took a quick screenshot from one of the affiliate networks. You can see there's a variety here. So ZA, this is South Africa, there's a lot. You can see there's a, a bunch in here, they're paying out 29 cents. Brazil, you know, a little bit more, 30 cents down here. ES is Spain, and then Malaysia and, and France. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, 29 cents, can I really make money doing that? Well, just an example, uh, a couple months ago, the, the single opt-ins in India were paying out four cents. And you know, there's no way you can make money on that, except for they were quite profitable for me uh, until they, they uh, ended up cutting the payout even more, than, lower than four cents. But even at four cents, I could make these work. So these ones at 29, 30, uh, you, can, you can definitely make them work. Now, test time. So I want to stress one thing to you. So variables cost you money when you are testing. So it's, you know, it's tempting when you first start. Okay, I'm going to take 10 spins, and I'm going to take 10 three questions, and I'm just going to test them all, and I'm going to see what runs, and I like this offer that pays out $5. Well, you're going to have to run so much traffic through all, through, you know, if you're running five or 10 offers through, that's what, 10 and 10, there's 20 different landers, and it's going to take you forever, and it's going to cost you a lot to figure out what offer's good, what lander's good. So, like I said, the most important thing is find an offer that works, and then after that, find a lander that works. So you want to do one of those two as quickly as possible. Pick a low payout, single opt-in, and I'd say maybe three spins, three, three questions, and just split test them against each other. And if, if you notice that the spins are beating the three questions, okay, well maybe I take out the three questions and I'm going to run a couple extra spins. And I'm running, you know, three different low payouts, low payout single opt-ins. And then I notice like one's doing really well. Okay, well maybe I give that one a higher percentage. I really want to 
find that best offer and I really want to find the best lander as quick as possible so I'm not spending any more money than I need to on, on the bad landers. You can always come back later, retest an offer, retest a lander, but if you, have, if you don't have an offer and you don't have a lander that works, it's really tough to get your data. So you want to just really zero in. Second, start with what works. So I'll give you some hints. If, if you're running mobile, I assume a lot of people or most people are going to be running mobile, make sure that if, well actually you'll, you'll always be able to select. So you want to select only mobile. You want smartphones and maybe tablets. You know, some countries have a lot of tablets, other countries not. Another hint for you, Android, I'm not really sure why for the most part in a lot of places it just converts better. So I always like to start with Android. Later, once I make sure I have a good offer and a good lander, I will throw in and retest iOS, Windows, and sometimes iOS is better. But for the most part, in the beginning, I'm really just trying to zero in. I want to find that offer. I want to find that lander. And then secondly, language. For certain countries, language is really important. Uh, and it, I'm going to set up a example uh, campaign for you. So let's see. So my example, I'm going to do Thailand. I live in Thailand. I love it. It's one of my favorite countries to run in. So first, Thailand, just you know, give it a name, Thailand single opt-in. And uh, oh, hold on. Actually, I think I missed something. Oh, sorry. I skipped one, one slide. Let me, let me tell you first why I love testing on pop ads. OK, so as you can see from the screen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set something up on pop ads for you. Why I love testing here, it is the best targeting of all the traffic sources I've ever worked with. I'm on 25, 30 different ones. You know, they're all good in a different way, but pop ads is where I test. They have the best targeting out of anyone. And better targeting equals more profits for you. Secondly, they're incredibly newbie friendly. They're very easy to set up. Interface is really good. And next, they have this thing called website quality. So I'm going to show you when I set it up. For, and I put top 80%, it's usually where I like to start my testing. What website quality does is, so if I pick top 80%, they're going to take the bottom 20% of all the websites that other people don't want. So when you don't want a website, we call it blacklisting. And you say, okay, cut that out, I don't want any more traffic. You can automatically, when you first launch, just say, okay, I want the, the top 80%. Cut out those 20% that other people don't want. And you, you can do 70, you can do 90, it, it's just, I like to cut out that bottom percent because if everyone else is blocking it, I'm probably, I'm probably going to block it too. And also, there's nothing stopping me, again, once I find the offer that works, once I find the lander that works, I can go back and test that bottom percent. I just don't want to be wasting money on those worst, uh, worst IDs in the beginning. And then also, they have this, they have the really, really low, low budget limits allowed. So it's $2.50. All, all it's going to spend is $2.50 for your first test. Every once in a while, you know, you set up a campaign, you're waiting for it to go live, and then, you know, it's bedtime. You go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, other, you know, other traffic sources, it might be $10, $20. It, it'll spend through all that while you're sleeping, maybe on just one bad ID. With pop ads, I never spend more than $2.50 because I just set it really low, and then I can go back and look at it again. There's also, so there's this thing I call rogue, whoops. There's this thing, sorry, <laughs> there's this thing I call rogue IDs. So every once in a while, you'll be running your campaign, it's going well, and then out of nowhere, you'll get a new website, we call them IDs, you get a new website, and it'll just have a ton of volume, and it'll just hit you out of nowhere, and it doesn't convert. And I have no, it's, it's a publisher releasing some, some new website. And for some reason, you're getting all, all the traffic. Well, it can spend through your entire budget. And you really have to, you really have to watch out for these. You're gonna, I get hit with them almost daily on at least you know, one of my traffic sources. So there's a lot lower amount of these for some reason on pop ads. So there's another reason I love testing here. And finally is the summary. So I'm going to show you at the end, they're going to give you this great summary that really helps out when you're setting up your campaign. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this quick for you. So put the name, here's the web quality. So as I said, I like to do 80, threes and, threes and above, it'll cut out that bottom 20%. Frequency cap, I like to leave this at one, one per 24. The reason for that, you know, if I have a bad, 
a bad website. I only want one. I only want each person to be seeing my, my ad once a day. A lot of this other stuff you can just leave as default. So like down here, I know when I first started, I was very tempted to play with this advertiser type. Oh, I can run pop under. I can run uh, pop up, tab up. I've tested this pretty extensively and I can't really tell the difference. I just leave it on pop under and do allow other methods and it basically uh, gives me the same as if I was to run four different campaigns and split it up. Next is the budget. So just leave it on uh, the smart bid. So the way that the bidding works on pop ads is another reason I love it is it's an auction system. So the top bidder wins and you pay the second highest price. So if I bid a dollar and you bid 50 cents, I win, but I only pay 50 cents. So this is why for some campaigns you can, you can bid up to you know, $5 per thousand, $10 per thousand, but because I'm only paying the next highest, it might, like I might bid five and only have to pay a dollar. But I wanna, if I get those really good IDs, I wanna guard against other people, so I wanna bid $10 just because that way if you raise your bid you raise your bid and you're trying to get this ID you're never going to get it from me if I'm high enough and most of the time I'm not going to end up paying too much for it so for maximum bid you got to put in per each pop-up so here this is 35 cents per thousand and then budget right like I said I'm just going to do two dollars and fifty cents perfect throttling Boom, just leave this as disabled. You don't have to do anything with it. Another thing. So we're going to go through this, all this am amazing targeting for you. In the beginning, because we're going to be running sweeps, I highly recommend you don't start with adult. A lot of offers don't take it. And you can always go back and test it later, but it runs really fast, and there's a lot of tough, tough IDs that will spend a lot of money. So in the beginning, start with just the general country targeting. I'm just going to do Thailand. Society targeting. So I'm running in Thailand and I'm running in Thai. So I'm going to do Thai language only. I don't want anyone whose phone is not set to Thai to see uh, to see my landers. If it popped up on someone's phone, you know, it's set to English, it's set to French. They're not going to understand it. There's no way they're going to convert. So I leave that out. Populations. So you don't have to worry about that. Environment targeting. Like I mentioned, I like to start with just Android. I'm not sure what browsers are going to be good, so I'm going to leave them all in. Device targeting, we're doing just mobile, so I'm only gonna do smartphones and tablets. You can see there's a lot of other options. You can always test them later, but these are gonna be the best two to start with. Again, devices, I'm not sure which ones are gonna be best, but I love having this targeting because later when I look at my data, I can come back and see, oh, well, for some reason, Acer is doing really bad, so I'm gonna take that one out, but Samsung is doing really good. Okay, I'm gonna whitelist that one. All these options are just extra ways that you could potentially make money. For connection, I'm running a single opt-in. Everyone can convert. They can convert on Wi-Fi, on 3G, so I'm just gonna leave everything out. But I wanted to show you real quick, this is where you would set up. On pop ads, we only care about connection type, okay? So this is where you would pick cellular, you'd add that, and then for example, there's there's three main ones in, in Thailand. There's maybe, maybe my offer only takes AIS. This is how you would do it. Put the AIS in, put the cellular. But like I said, mine, my offer can, everyone can convert on my offer, so we're gonna leave them out. Next, for timing, I, I can pick. Maybe I'm going to sleep and I don't want it to start. I can take a couple hours out. Usually I like to leave this one open. And finally, for the website targeting, disabled, because I don't know what I'm gonna exclude, but this is where you would do it. You would exclude, this is where your blacklist would go, or your whitelist if you have some really good IDs. Uh, you can only do one or the other. And then finally, with the summary. Okay, so this is great information. A lot of other traffic sources, they don't give you any of this. So right here, average bid. So with my settings, the average bid is 62 cents. So, oh, sorry, six cents. Highest effective bid, the absolute highest I could bid and anything higher wouldn't change anything. Was that $9.90, that's pretty high. And my bidding position, 18. So 17 people ahead of me, that's fine. I like to start low, because I don't want to overpay for the bad IDs. 
and right here I can see. So in between these bids, there's 167,000 views. So I could start off right in there. I did 35 cents. I could go even lower. I could go 23, and I have access to 100, almost 170,000. You can see right here, we're estimated to get 186,000 impressions. I'm going to get so much data so quick. And this breakdown right here, it's just great. And a lot of other traffic sources don't have it. You can go back in, you can tweak some stuff, and you can see I dropped my bid. Oh, do I get more impressions? Well, if you drop your bid, you'll get less impressions. How much does it change? And this can really help you in the beginning uh, when you're testing. And a lot of other traffic sources don't have this. Okay. And then I just want to give you a basic outline for what I'd recommend for testing on pop ads. Like I said, this is where I always do my initial testing. So first, watch it like a hawk and cut out the bad IDs. So maybe you're not sure if your offer is good or your lander is good. Well, if you pick a number, and so you know a lot of people will do two, maybe three times the payout of your offer, and after you pass that for the ID, you cut it. So the only thing you can really do in the beginning is cut bad IDs. Cut them out, cut them out, cut them out quick. You can always come back in and test them again. You really want to get after trying to find that offer that's going to convert and that lander that's going to convert. Next, once I get a bunch of conversions, what else is underperforming? Okay, maybe one of the types of Android is not, not doing very well. Maybe you see a browser, anything you can find. There's so many targeting options in pop ads. Go after it. Try and find what you can cut out to try and get to green as quick as possible. Then, what I like to do is, so my first campaign is going to be at 35 cents. I'm going to take all the IDs that are making money at 35 cents, and I'm going to make a whitelist. So everything that between probably like 35 and 50 cents is how much money they're making, or yeah, how much revenue they're making per thousand. I'm going to make that. Then I'm going to copy the campaign, and I'm going to raise the bid a little. I'm going to go, let's say, 55 cents. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to see, okay, are there new IDs, better IDs? Make a second whitelist now at that mid bid. Then I raise it again. Because if I raise the bid and I leave them in, they're not going to be profitable. If they're only making 40 cents per, per thousand impressions and then I bid 50, now they go, you know, they're going to go negative. I want to keep them at that, at that low, low bid. So keep pushing the bid. This is the way that you're able to find those new, those new IDs, okay? Then circle back and you can retest once again. So now in the beginning, you didn't have a good offer and you didn't have a good landing page. So maybe that's why the IDs were bad. You can go back, do a quick test. Once you know, every once in a while, you're gonna find that combination of this lander and this offer just, it's just killing it. You'd be surprised, you know, once in a mile, you're making 100, 200, 300, 400% ROI. Go back and retest those IDs. And then also, go back and retest, okay, go back, try iOS, try Windows, try anything that you had excluded in the beginning and see. Sometimes you can find some profit and sometimes you can find a lot of profit. Some people don't ever run iOS and that traffic can be a lot cheaper. And then now is the time to go in and you can, oops, you can test pins. So now, you know, I've been running the, the single opt-in, you know, I got it, I got a good lander, make sure you change your lander a little for the pin, but now's the time, you go in and you can add in these pins. So for example, I think right now in Thailand, it's paying 24 cents for an SOI and it pays a dollar, a dollar-ish for a pin submit. Well, if you can get those really good IDs, obviously I wanna try and run them to the pin submit because you're going to make even more profit. And that's just the basic outline for how I would go about uh, the beginning testing. Again, I, I mean, I, there's a lot more that goes into it after this. And once you join the six-week course, you know, I'll have all the time to help you out th uh, through. But I hope that, that this little overview is giving you a good, uh, good starting point.